Hello, good evening and welcome to Business here on Joy News Prime with me, Beverly Broom. We go straight into our stories now. And Director of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, ISA, Economist Professor Peter Quarte is calling on government to strike a good balance between raising revenue and promoting the private sector growth if it wants to increase the demand for labor. According to him, it will be practically impossible for the private sector to create jobs if they are burdened with taxes and unfriendly climate to thrive. Professor Quarte's reaction comes on the back of a report by the Bank of Ghana indicating that the real sector activities of the economy recorded mixed performance as demand for labor fell to 7.1% year on year. I'm more concerned especially for the youth. Mm -hmm. So we are churning out a lot of young, energetic people whom we have to find jobs, we have to find means of engaging them. And if we don't, they become uh, discouraged and you know they are the future generation uh, and therefore we need to engage them meaningfully. So for me, uh, for employment to go down is, is not uh, the best, but I'm, I'm hopeful that with the coming on board of the IMF program and with some little stability that we are seeing, um, hopefully uh, um, output growth will pick up, business process will pick up, and also cost of doing business uh, will improve uh, given the stability in the exchange rates. Mm. But if these trends will continue, um, it, it, it might not augur well for us. I've spoken about the case of the youth who um, with returning out of businesses, sorry, out of school, uh, they have to be engaged. It might bring stress on parents, it might bring stress on the uh, citizenry, it might bring a lot of stress because it, uh, young people are not employed and they have to depend on the few or the, the working class. It, that is not the best. Um, also, um, it, it casts doubt on the future mm. of the country as well as the uh, ordinary uh, person or the, the young person that do not find jobs. So I, I think we need to invest more. Uh, we need to promote to the private sector. Government cannot employ uh, most of these people. It is the private sector that has to flourish. So as we impose taxes, as we impose levies, as we impose all kinds of regulatory measures, let's also bear in mind that we are stifling the private sector. We need to strike a good balance between raising revenue and also promoting the private sector. Now, the government has indicated that it will press ahead with plans to migrate all accounts to the Bank of Ghana by the end of this year, despite the current push that's by the current pushback to the program. This is what Joy Business has picked up from persons working on this policy. There's more in the following report. Joy Business understands this pushback is coming from some ministries, departments and agencies that have reservations about this program and how it will rather affect the operations. But government insists the benefits to the economy are enormous as it stands to improve its finances in the coming months. This because government would be in a position to appreciate all the funds at its disposal, a development that might help reduce borrowings from the central bank and free up the space for the private sector. It also believes that it will help government to honor payments to clients of these commercial banks, a development that should be beneficial to these financial institutions. It is therefore dismissing reports that implementing this program or rather hurt the commercial banks in the country. Government in a document to the IMF has indicated that it is hoping to fully implement this program by the end of this year. It believes that it will bring a lot more transparency in management of government's account as well as appreciate the true financial position of the country's treasury. Now, research lead at GCB Capital Courage Booty has been reacting to the move by government. It have been the case long ago. I guess it was a program that started and maybe stalled along the way because as part of the program we exited in 2019, we we're supposed to transition all accounts onto the Treasury Signal account. Some agencies may have migrated already, and I believe this last phase may be for the others who are not on it to move now to that single treasury account. Once those funds are being moved, uh, it, it, it reduces what is available to these banks who have been holding these accounts all this while. But then I guess we are at a point where everybody have to end their fees, right? 
I mean, if you are a bank and your job is to mobilize deposits and grant loans, uh, you need to ultimately end, end your money. And so uh, probably this, this triggers, uh, if you like, innovation in the banking sector to find new ways of mobilizing deposits they can keep on their books for long. By the way, government and its agencies will still mobilize uh, or collect their fees and, and charges through these banks anyway. You go to some department agencies and you see banks tell us they're collecting some of this money. These monies will come anyway. And so the, the, what it means is that there will now be a shorter holding period because there will be a defined period within which you would have to lodge these monies or balances into certain accounts at the Bank of Ghana, really. So between when you mobilize till when um, you lodge them, you could earn your overnight fees and all of that on them. But really, long-term deposits that can go into loans and many other stuff, banks would have to end their fees, really. And that is the challenge it throws at them. Moving on, the Energy Commission is using this year's Renewable Energy Challenge to support the activities of small-scale farmers, a move that would encourage them to use renewable resources in the operations. The competition, known as the Energy Commission Senior High School's Renewable Challenge, is expecting participating schools to come up with innovative ideas to increase production to support the fight against food scarcity in the country. Speaking to journalists at the launch of the fourth edition of the Context, Executive Secretary of the Energy Commission, Engineer Oscar Amonu, said the platform will be used to bridge the gap between academia and agriculture. The High School's Renewable Challenge was born out of the Commission's mandate under the Renewable Energy Act to promote the development and efficient use of the renewable energy resources through public education, training and regulation of entrepreneurs in the sector. The theme for this year's event, Mechanized Small Scale Agriculture Using Renewable Energy Technologies, is aimed at supporting peasant farmers with modern technology to boost food production through innovation. Here is Executive Secretary of the Energy Commission, Engineer Oscar Mononeza. Starting catching them young from the senior high schools, for them to have this belief in themselves that they can also invent something that would be of relevance to our country and more so this part of the world. So we are blessed with so many resources. God has blessed with so many resources. So we are encouraging them to use the resources that we, the natural resources that we have around us and use it to find practical solutions to our daily challenges. So you could see that last year the winning school came out with a solar dehydrator. This year we're looking at using mechanized means by virtue of renewable energy to find ways of developing our agriculture uh, industry. So we are believing that um, the kids having this challenge and with the support that we're giving to them, they'll be able to come up with some relevant solutions to our daily challenges in the agricultural sector. Deputy Minister for Education in charge of TVET, Gifty Chuman Pofu, said that the various inventions that will come up from the contest will be used to commercialize the agricultural sector. So that we could know that our peasant farmers are not just growing for themselves and their nuclear families, but growing to get enough produce, preserve them, process them, store them properly, at least to serve a community, a district, a constituency, and then a region. And as you all do that, then Ghana could say that yes, we have food security, which is not relying on any food aid, but on our own efforts. In this era of planning for food and jobs, the theme for this year and the product they're going to give us will take us far. In all, 10 high schools from the greater Accra region are competing for a place at the national contest. Now, the special advisor to the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Oliver Boache, has indicated that the lack of strong policy standards is accounting for the delay in transitioning to a secular economy. According to him, these challenges need to be addressed to enhance job creation in all sectors. He was speaking at the Sankalf West Africa Summit.
The Sankarp West Africa Summit provides entrepreneurs and business owners with the opportunity to network with investors to drive sustainable development. The summit was held under the theme Unleashing the Power of Partnerships, delivering the keynote address special advisor to the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Oliver Boache, said addressing the challenges hindering the smooth transition to a circular economy is critical. Other challenges that confront the transition to circular economy include lack of strong policy standards and regulations, the need for education, awareness creation and community engagement, and lack of technology and innovation. If you are able to overcome these challenges in Africa and succeed in achieving a just transition to circular economy, many jobs will be created along the value chains of all sectors in both developed and developing countries will be more so in developing countries and largely among those in the vulnerable segments of our societies. I have a very strong conviction that the entry of IntelliCAP into the West Africa region through the Sankap West Africa Summit marks the beginning of the kind of partnerships and initiatives that will ultimately help Ghana and Africa to achieve the just transition. Partner and director at Intelecap Africa, Kanika Yadav, added that supporting and investing in businesses is critical to building a strong and resilient economy. It's very critical for the uh, individual governments to create an ecosystem uh, or the regulatory framework which is conducive to the growth of the entrepreneurs and which is able to uh, grow them rather than hold them back. Uh, so, for instance, in the regulations in the perspective, if you have the regulations for a business which is doing a $10 million of revenue versus a business which has a $10,000 $10, of revenue, if the regulations, the permits, the licenses, everything which is same for the businesses at a different scale, then it is a hindrance for any new business to come into the market because then they'll be just uh, 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 bothered by all these regulations. That the government was also urged to provide a stable environment for businesses in the country to thrive. Now, businesses in the country have been urged to embrace environmentally, social and governance principles in their operations in order to attract investors who have become sensitive to the impact of business practices on the environment. The ESG strategy is underpinned by KPMG's recognition of its responsibility to improve its impact on the world and the ESG commitments outlined in the company's impact plan. Here's more from KPMG's ESG breakfast meeting, Propac Ghana 2023 conference. Over the years, investors have focused on returns and security of investments. However, attention is shifting towards how these investments impact the society and the environment and what corporate governance structures are in place to achieve this. Speaking to Joy Business on the sidelines of the ESG Breakfast Meeting, Propa Ghana 2023 Conference, Partner, Internal Audit, Risk and Compliance at KPMG, Kwame Sapombanie, highlighted the relevance of imbibing been the ESG principles corporate governance structure. So ESG brings about a consistent way, a process to give us the assurance that we know what we're doing and what we're doing is beneficial to uh, our society, the environment and the, the, the world as a whole. What we know for sure is that you become more resilient in the sense that you have a deeper understanding of your value chain, how you actually run your business well with proper diversity, with the ability to be, be, be responsible across your value chain. Making a point during a panel discussion, head of ESG, Sustainable and Climate Finance, DBG, John Watting Ikuo Koteria, said his outfit is preparing to support businesses mobilize climate financing to scale up. I believe um, the financial sector um, has more to do. We are here to help them grow together. Um, we are here to also provide that additionality and that intervention for them to scale and also be in a good position to mobilize um, climate financing 
so that we can do more with the capital that we have. On his part, Principal Programs Officer at the Environmental Protection Agency, Daniel Lamti, stated that they are ready to assist businesses who want to leverage on the carbon asset framework to conceptualize their business plans. So for us, um, we see private sector as an engine of growth. And so what we have done in terms of introducing the carbon market framework in Ghana is to create the needed attention in Ghana for um, carbon assets. And so we appeal to any business, anyone seeking to actually implement any green business idea, approach us. We're happy to um, help you convert that into a concept and raise finance um, to support or implement and achieve your business, green business. The 2023 ESG breakfast meeting was on the theme ESG in emerging markets, driving sustainability and resilience in a changing world. We do some more stories now and some investors say economic opportunities for private sector are gradually back on track as Ghana navigates way out of global economic meltdown. Global Technical Director for Orking Pest Control, Dr. Roy Harrison, has underscored the importance of pest control in Ghana's economy, indicating that it's an area the government can leverage to aid in improving the standard of living of individuals. He spoke to Joy Business as the company paid a visit to the American Chamber of Commerce, Ghana. Dr. Harrison at the engagement called for a stronger role for pest control in the production of food and related industries. He maintained that Orkin provides effective pest control management with a quick response time and a focus on safety. Well, we think this is a perfect time to make sure that Orkin pest control is here in Ghana. Um, we've seen now that the pandemic is passed, we're seeing an increase in economic activities throughout the world as well as here in Ghana. There's a lot of growth going on. And we need to ensure that the environment here is, is comfortable, that structures are protected, when the people come that they don't worry about getting a disease. And we're just thrilled that we have partnered with such a great organization here in Ghana to provide the Orkin service. We originally are from the United States, that's where the home office is, but now that we have over 100 franchises throughout the world and we're thrilled that we have a franchise here in Ghana. Orkin is a global company and the headquarters are in Atlanta, Georgia, and that's where I came. And my responsibility is to globally ensure that the service of, of Orkin Pest Control is the same everywhere. And I'm thrilled to be here in Ghana. I've got my team here with me. They perform the service here. And Collins is the manager here. He does great service. He manages this team. But the service... Meanwhile, external relations and project manager at the American Chamber of Commerce, Ghana, Jane Ochiduache, pledged the Chamber's commitment to supporting its members. So we at AmCham, we are very proud to be associated with Orkin Ghana because, I mean, the professionalism at which they, I mean, uh, add to their, 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 their service, it's, it's, it's so amazing. You know, and uh, Orking is a member of AMCHAM, and we are so delighted to be part of them. It is also important to know that it's, uh, Orking is the only member that is into pest control management. So I'm calling on members and non-members to engage with Orking. Definitely you find cockroaches and mosquitoes somewhere in your homes or in your offices. And we want to have a healthy living. We want to have healthy living both in the office and at home. The American Chamber of Commerce Ghana and Orkin Pest Control says they will deepen their relationship to promote trade. Now, Ecobank Ghana PLC has awarded some 53 winners in its first draw of the Ecobank double salary promo reloaded. According to the bank, these customers stand to win more prices in subsequent draws. Speaking to Joy Business, Chief Financial Officer and Executive Director at Ecobank Ghana, Dr. Edward Nati Butri, maintained that the bank would deepen its relationship with its customers and offer the best of service. Beyond the, the draw itself, the value of the account that we are offering to them, this is an account that when you get sick there are benefits to be had when you lose your job there's some insurance cover that you get um, so even apart from the draw even for those customers who don't win during this uh, draw um, opening the account itself gives them tremendous benefits 
And for us, we, we think that that is real, real value that we are giving to our customers. There are also two additional draws to be had um, before the, the end of August. Um, so yes, for, for those who might have won now, um, they still do have the chance to win at the, at the next two draws. And hopefully they all, they all get to win. I think for us in Ecobank, um, we've, we've always come up with um, interesting ideas. We've, we've, we've always come up with ways to reward our clients. So um, even apart from this, this draw, there would always be um, interesting things here in Ecobank. River, River from Panukuma branch, the Pabrita from SST branch. On that note, we end Prime Business here on Joy News Prime with me, Beverly Broom. But we have more stories when you log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. I leave you with news making headlines on the international front.